All right, last time um, we focused mostly on um, the palace and uh, <clears throat> the central imperial axis um, of Beijing. So today we will look at um, <clears throat> some other kind of key imperial monument in Mingqing Dynasty, uh, Beijing, and especially the so-called ritual architecture. Uh, the ritual architecture <clears throat> refer to, um, it's a unique um, Chinese architectural typology. It referred to the um, architecture specifically constructed to fulfill the ritual purpose of Confucianism <coughs> um, and um, Confucianism um, that had uh, formed a systematic way of um, organizing the society and um, using um, the ritual system to create a hierarchical harmony. You know, we have been looking at uh, the Ming Tang um, from the early imperial period, <clears throat> from the Han Dynasty, the Tang Dynasty. And they all kind of uh, follow the Confucian classics of the Book of Rites, right? So Ming Tang is a, um, Ming Tang is a, you know, ritual architecture. <clears throat> it was built um, to fulfill the emperor as the son of heaven, as someone holding the mandate of heaven. And um, it needs to meet the requirement that is delineated in the book of rights um, for <clears throat> to, accom to accom accommodate those ritual performance, you know, architecture to accommodate ritual ceremonies uh, to fulfill a Confucian um, society, you know, those dedicated um, to ancestors, those dedicated to um, ritual performances, uh, for the mandate of heaven or those um, for, um, <clears throat> you know, remembering the their ancestors. Um, and those were all considered as ritual architecture. It also include building dedicated to um, the uh, symbolic uh, spirits that represent, uh, represent the Confucian idea about um, the universe. Um, so some of the um, worshiping spaces for mountains and for uh, stars um, are not uh, classified as Taoist, but rather uh, classified as, as ritual because they were um, those key elements in Confucian model of the, of the universe, of the world. <clears throat> so sometimes it's um, it can be uh, confusing, but in the city of Beijing, uh, <clears throat> you know, last time we we looked at the Forbidden City uh, mostly, and uh, we know that Beijing Ming and the Qing Dynasty Beijing is dominated by a central north-south axis. <coughs> um, but uh, <coughs> just outside the inner city, we know Beijing had four layer of city walls. Um, in the center is the Forbidden City. And uh, outside we have the uh, the imperial city. Outside of the imperial city is the inner city, right? Inner city. <clears throat> and then there is the outer city. 
the outer city was originally meant to go all the way around um, the inner city. So outside the inner city, there are four major um, ritual architecture in Beijing. In the southern suburb here is the Temple of Heaven. So that's for the sacrifice to heaven. That's the most important one because you know the emperor was known as the son of heaven and this is the place to make sacrifice to heaven, right? Known as the temple of heaven, but in Chinese it's more like um, the altar of heaven. So it's uh, mainly the central building is not um, uh, a roof covering a space, but it's a it's a it's a it's an altar, um, an altar that is open to sky for making sacrifice. That's in the southern suburb. <clears throat> in the northern suburb is the uh, that's a temple of earth or the the altar of earth. And uh, in the eastern suburb, there's a temple of the sun. And on the western, in the western suburb, it's the temple of the moon. <clears throat> so the earth, um, the, the heaven, the sun, and the moon. So Originally, the outer city was meant to enclose all the four major altars within the outer city wall uh, in the 16th century. But due to um, financial difficulty and the decline of the Ming Dynasty, <clears throat> only the southern part is completed and only the son of heaven, uh, the, the, the altar of heaven is enclosed within the outer city. The, la the, the rest of the three remained uh, without, um, without being enclosed uh, into uh, a walled city. Right? But you can tell that this is a very um, kind of a neatly organized um, ritual facilities according to their direction and uh, dedicated to the key spirit. And, um, so, you know, such a spatial um, organization remind us the Ming Tang, right? The Ming Tang. While in the Ming Tang um, building, those sacrifice and ritual performance um, were accommodated within one building. We know that after Tang Dynasty, after Wu Zetian, Ming Tang as a architectural type basically disappeared from the history of Chinese architecture. But that doesn't mean the functionality uh, was abandoned. Um, so, com, you know, Confucian ritual still need to be accommodated. Where were they accommodated after Tang Dynasty? Um, they were accommodated within separate buildings. So in the Ming and the Qing Dynasty, these are four major um, altars or temples um, were kind of a performing the same functionality to legitimize um, the emperor as the son of heaven. So the emperor needed to perform <clears throat> sacrifice to heaven, to earth, to the sun, to the moon in different months and different season. So that is pretty much like what Ming Tang had been um, had been <clears throat> accommodating. 
So after Tang Dynasty, basically, um, those sacrifices were made in separate buildings. While before that, uh, especially according to the Zhou Dynasty ideal, they were accommodated within uh, the Ming Tang. So now let's take a look at those uh, ritual architecture, the so-called ritual architecture, <clears throat> the Temple of Heaven in the southern suburb. It is located to the east of the um, central axis, right? So here, um, you know, we have we have the central axis of Beijing, and to the east is the Temple of Heaven, <clears throat> kind of like. Um, You know, like the the uh, Ming Tang, the Temple of Heaven, is also characterized by the use of circle and a square. Okay, for example, <clears throat> the central space, central building, which is this one. This is the actual altar, um, actual uh, altar to make sacrifice. <clears throat> The altar itself is a circular platform and it is um, enclosed by a circular wall. And then that circular wall is enclosed by a square wall. So obviously there is a kind of a metaphor of heaven and earth, a square and a circle, um, just like what Ming Tang um, did before the Tang Dynasty. And um, so the whole planning utilize circle and a square. The general <clears throat> outline um, of, the, of the site also enclosed um, within a wall has a kind of a circular northern half and a square southern half, right? So there's a square and a circle combined um, in its general shape. And then there are square and a circle motif um, within you know, each uh, buildings. So for example, here there is another circle, right? A half circle kind of responding to, um, to the Northern uh, wall. And then uh, this one is the famous temple of heaven so this is the actual building. The building is you know, located on a three level marble platform, circular platform. And the building itself is a circular building and uh, the courtyard is a square, right? So there are you know, many, many layers of square and circle, pretty much like what Ming Tang did. Um, <clears throat> um, the, Temple of Heaven, um, its main entrance is the Western entrance. So this is the major entrance. These, these two gates, these are the ma main entrance. Uh, so the entrance is from the central axis, uh, ax uh, axis, right? So this is the central axis. So if you follow this avenue, go straight up, you will um, enter the main south of the inner city and uh, keep walking, you will arrive at the Tiananmen Tower and uh, enter the Forbidden City. So that's the uh, central north-south axis, right? So the main entrance is, is on the west from the Western Gate. The complex had um, two layers of walls. Each has the a northern circular, northern, northern, wall and a square southern wall. Um, <clears throat> in the outer layer, it's mostly um, a forest. So trees were planted there. So it's basic, basically uh, trees. And inside the, um, the inner circle, um, there is a north-south axis and along that axis is the, um, the key uh, sacrificial spaces. 
And that inner circle has a uh, southern gate. It's lined up with the southern gate and the northern gate, north gate. So um, at the southernmost um, of this axis is the, the altar of heaven, this one, to make sacrifice. And a small circular building to its north that is a very small pavilion to keep the um, tap the the tablet for heaven. You know, in Confucianism, one of the major difference between Confucianism and Taoism as a religion is that in Confucianism, uh, usually those spirits, ancestors, or uh, deities were worshipped in the form of inscribed ta tablet. So they were not um, worshipped in the, as a icon, as a statue. Rather, um, in the temple of heaven, for example, there is no statue for, for heaven, for God of heaven. <clears throat> Rather, there is just a tablet a small tablet. And on that tablet, it's just the title written in Chinese, um, the title of heaven. Um, and it is the just the making sacrifice to that uniconic title, just to that inscription, inscribed tablet. And that tablet is kept in that small building. And uh, on winter solstice, that tablet uh, would be carried and moved to the altar and the emperor uh, make sacrifice um, and uh, bow to, to the tablet with the title of the gods inscribed on it. So this is uh, also true for the other three uh, altars, um, the earth, the sun, the moon. So there's no um, anthropomorphical statue representing those spirits, representing those, those deities. And that is one of the major reason why these were classified as a Confucian temple, um, com, you know, ritual um, architecture. Uh, they, are not, they are not Taoist. Well, sometimes in Taoist temple, you also find um, a building dedicated to, um, you know, the a spirit of a mountain or something. But those were usually worshipped uh, in a anthropomorphic form, in a human form, you know, in a in a in an icon. So that's that's uh, Taoist Taoism. So that's uh, these two um, building. And uh, and then there is a small courtyard, and that is for uh, you know killing the uh, sacrificial animals. So during those sacrifice, um, the major sacrifice use uh, you know a boar, an ox, and a sheep. So the three kind of sacrificial animals uh, that were um, they were being being sacrificed being killed uh, in this little uh, courtyard. They were called the divine kitchen, uh, the divine kitchen for the killing of those sacrificial animal and then brought to the altar to be burned to you know, make that, that's called a sacrifice, right? So sacrifice, sacrifice those animal and um, you know, making other, you know, burning other valuable stuff, you know, present to, to God, heaven. So to the north along this axis, that is the more kind of iconic building in the temple of heaven. That is called the temple of heaven. It's, um, um, it's a formal title. It's the hall for prayer um, for a, a prosperous year, right? So you can see the year. That is that building. <clears throat> That's an actual building, not just an altar. 
and that is to um, to pray for a uh, good year. So um, that's along this central axis. There are smaller facilities to keep those utensils and 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 um, um, that were used during those ceremony and, and a procession. And then just off center on the west side, just within the inner wall enclosure, there is a two layered courtyard. And that is the, um, um, that's the fasting palace, all right? Fasting palace. Um, <clears throat> before three days, before the winter solstice, the son of heaven uh, come to the temple of heaven and uh, they stay there for three nights, stay in that palace for, for three nights. And um, that's a gesture of purification. So during those three days, three days before the sacrifice to heaven, um, the son of heaven need to <clears throat> um, be away from women. Uh, he, so so he, he, he needs to um, have a fasting. Um, <clears throat> and um, he also need to um, eat only vegetarian food, uh, no meat, no women and um, kind of uh, meditate and try to purify himself to get prepared to meet um, heaven, who is spiritually his father, right? So um, that is the, called the, the fasting um, palace. Right? So <clears throat> um, as you can see, making sacrifice here on a specific day, specific season, um, that for the sacrifice to heaven, that is during winter solstice. And um, it is performing the same task as what the uh, Ming Tang had been accommodating to regulate the activity of the sun of heaven according to the natural cycle of the universe and thus legitimize the emperor as carrying on the task, the running of the universe and serving as the middleman between heaven and earth. And uh, to do that, the son of heaven need to perform a series of ritual. It's not just on the day of the sacrifice, but also a series of ritual to purify himself. You know, what happened after, uh, you know, during the sacrifice, the son of heaven was supposed to be able to communicate with heaven and uh, to be able to receive command from heaven and pass it on to his people. And shortly after the, um, um, the sacrifice to heaven, he um, was also to kind of bestow um, the, um, the, a calendar. And that calendar is considered as also, um, you know, a, a divine um, revelation. Um, uh, uh, inspired by, by, by heaven. And, um, you know, for the farmers uh, in the ancient time, you know, knowing the time and knowing uh, being the ability to give definition to time, to days and seasons and those key, um, <clears throat> key moment um, to tell them you know, when to plow, when to sow the seeds, when to do harvest. And that is, that must looks like a, a god. Um, and indeed, and that is precisely what makes the emperor looks like a god because he was performing this ritual and he was giving definition to space and time. And he is regulating time with space. And that is performed in the past in, um, the Ming Tang, and uh, in the late imperial period, it is in the so-called ritual architecture, and the Temple of Heaven is one of them, right? 
<clears throat> so this is the central axis, right? Um, we are looking in that direction. This is the um, the altar of heaven, and uh, the inner circle, three platforms, um, and um, the three three platforms during the um, uh, sacrifice. Uh, <clears throat> Only the emperor um, and uh, were allowed to kind of stand on the upper platform. Um, high officials on the second one, and yet lower ranking officials here, and those guard um, staying in those spaces. So it's very hierarchical. And to some extent, <clears throat> the upper level. Uh, when the, the emperor was standing there alone, he had a real sense of, you know, being the singular um, mediator uh, between heaven and earth. Um, and indeed, the architectural space was designed in a way that when you are standing on that platform, you do feel um, significantly closer to heaven because uh, all the the rest of the ground are significantly lower. When you are standing on that, you are looking at the top of the of those trees, and um, um, so the environment was designed in a way that make the sky the main character for that space. So you don't want a building, you don't want a roof there, because the roof for that space is the heaven, is. And it is designed in a way that you actually feel the heaven, the sky is like a roof when you are standing on, on top of that space. So next time, you know, when you have a chance uh, to go there, you know, you, you need to go up there um, and uh, to see um, what I'm talking about. Uh, you really have that kind of a sense. Um, and that is because of the, um, the whole design of not only that specific spot, but the entire um, planning of the complex. So to the north, that is a tiny little building keeping um, the tablet for um, heaven. And to keep going north, the, that courtyard, that is where um, the temple for prayer for a prosperous year, um, that building is located. And usually people will look, look at a picture of that building and call it the Temple of Heaven, um, because that is actual architecture. But in reality, the most sacred space for the Temple of Heaven is not that building for a good year, but this empty space, um, this altar. That is the, uh, the place the actual sacrifice was made. <clears throat> and then on the west side, that is the uh, fasting palace. Um, <clears throat> so this is the west gate. So we are looking at that direction and looking at that gate. Entering that gate and uh, going north, or if you enter that gate, you go straight, you will enter the most, the, the, uh, the central space. So um, going south to enter the inner circle from the south gate, one is following the north-south axis, following the ritual axis. But going through the, um, this western gate, um, one would go straight to the fasting palace to serve the emperor, uh, or the emperor would come to the fasting palace from that gate. So this is the, um, uh, the Western Gate. And um, <clears throat> so this is the enclosure for the altar, right? Um, and this is the inner enclosure, right? The inner enclosure, that circular enclosure. And that enclosure um, has the uh, symbolic gate. There's no door in those gate. All right, they are, they are symbolic, they are demarcator, indicating one is trespassing into more and more sacred space, right? So that's one of the function of the gate, 
uh, when the ga gate has no door, that is a symbolic gate. Um, you know, it's like the uh, trifle arch in Western architecture or the tali uh, in Japanese architecture. Um, it is just a demarcator of, um, of border between sacred and profane. Um, that is for the altar. <clears throat> and, uh, <clears throat> you know, entering those gate, you, you, you find, um, yeah. Uh, this is, now this is the gate, the outer gate, you know, for the outer layer, the square layer, and looking uh, toward the center. So you see the gate, the wall and the gate for the inner circular circle, and this is a square circle. And then um, that is the altar, right? That's the altar. Um, just clear all those so you can see it better. So basically we are looking um, from the gate um, outside the wall, the square wall, looking at the, uh, the altar in the center. And um, this is the altar itself. So you can see uh, even from, from outside, you know, we are standing in between the circular inner wall and the square outer wall and looking at the altar. So you can tell that that altar is elevated um, way above the top of the walls. Um, so, so that you, even though it is not, it's not a, a e extremely tall building at all, it's not that, that tall, but somehow uh, the erasing of any tall element in the surrounding area make that space uh, very majestic. And uh, once you are standing, um, on top of that space, you feel that the actual roof of that space is the sky. And um, so entering that those different layers of the walls, um, you, you face um, the, the altar and there are stairs, steps on the cardinal direction, you know, one thing for the design of the Temple of Heaven is it is very, it is oriented very um, kind of a specifically and accurately toward cardinal direction. And this is also the characteristic, of course, for uh, the Ming Tang architecture, because cardinal direction were corresponding with different seasons, right, different time uh, in the Chinese cosmology. So this those cardinal um, direction, um, you know, they're on cardinal direction for the altar of heaven. And there are also, um, you know, monumental stairs uh, ascending to the three layers um, of the, you know, the three layers um, of the platform. Kind of uh, get, getting a sense of going closer and closer to heaven. Um, so that is the, um, the outer part. And after that, one is facing a circular wall and that a circular wall, we then had a circular wall is the small tablet, um, tablet building. And um, th that is that small pavilion and inside there's nothing but just but a tablet. Um, so during um, sacrifice, the tablet would be carried out to put on the on the um, top platform on the altar, and um, you know to serve as the uh, central target of worship and sacrifice uh, during the ritual ceremony. A very well proportioned building. Um, 
So it's very simple, it's just a circular uh, with a curved sloping roof, but somehow the designer, the craftsman, you know, um, had a great sense of harmony um, of making that very simplistic shape, such a um, presenting such a majestic um, form. Uh, and uh, even though it is, it is not super big, it's not, not very monumental, um, <clears throat> the proportion and the well-designed uh, uh, graceful curve of the roof um, and the proportion between the platform, the central vertical wall and the sloping roof um, makes a very elegant building uh, image. The southern part of the building um, is timber framed and the northern part is um, enclosed by very thick wall. Even though the load bearing um, members are still the post and lintel wooden architecture, but the northern part has a thick wall. And you can see this is the end of that thick wall. So it has a, you know, half open to the south and half closed to the harsh north. A small building like this represent most dramatically the Chinese um, association, symbolic association with the north and south direction, right? Um, the south is um, the origin of benevolent um, energy uh, that can be opened up to, and the north is the or the um, the origin of those harmful forces and that need a a thick wall. So, um, so th I think you know for a building like this, where the function is primarily to preserve a tablet, no one is living there, and that thick wall and that kind of open uh, wooden wooden frame, entirely kind of wooden frame. There's, there's not even a lower part of the masonry wall. It's all doors that open feature um, that is really symbolic um, and uh, rather than any kind of a practical consideration because you know, there's no one living in that building and uh, there's no absolutely no need to make such a dramatic contrast. One side is totally thick wall, another side is totally open. This is the inside and you can see there is nothing but a tablet elevated on a platform and during the winter solstice, it is going to be carried out and uh, to be put on the altar. Um, under the roof is a post and lintel timber dome, right? There aren't that many uh, dome made of post and lintel wooden structure, but here is one of the one of them. Um, craftsmen use brackets to create a domical ceiling. And um, again, the space is not monumental, not big in terms of size, but it is monumental. It is majestic because of the um, elegant design that make a small space um, that seems grand and majestic. So following that north-south axis and travel further to the north, um, so you can see the gate to the Goodyear building and the top part of that Goodyear um, building in the, in the distance. That's, that's what we are looking at here. Uh, we are standing at the gate, at, uh, at this gate, you know, the, the gate of this wall, looking at, at that complex. So you, you also get a sense of the scale of this complex. It's pretty big, it's really huge. So we are looking at the distance from here to here. 
and that that gives us a picture like that. So it's a it's a really um, large um, complex, but this large complex architecture is uh, the minority. Most of them are forest, um, the wood, and um, um, wood and grass and trees. So it's it's mostly uh, nature, um, but uh, both nature and architecture are organized into those geometric shape of circle and square. And uh, this is the gate, right? The gate to that Goodyear complex. And in entering the gate is another gate. So um, two layers of square courtyards. So um, the addition of layers of enclosure added to the um, symbolic significance and uh, sacredness um, of the space being shrouded within those enclosures. So basically, if you want to highlight, emphasize how important a building is in the traditional Chinese architectural convention, uh, you enclose it with more layers of walls and uh, one need to pass more gates to reach that center and that indicate um, the kind of a um, higher level of, uh, you know, um, kind of a divine um, status, basically. So the second gate, <clears throat> a little bit more open than the first one. Right, that's the previous one that looks solid. And, um, um, and then the second one that is more open. Again, there's no door inside of this space. So it's also pretty much a um, symbolic gate. So after that is the uh, famous um, so-called Temple of Heaven. But again, its formal title is this one. Hall for prayer for prosperous year. Um, it is elevated on three layers of platforms and the building itself has three eaves. So number three is significant here because you know the, um, the three realms in Confucianism is heaven, earth, and human world, right? And the emperor was the son of heaven to rule the human world on earth. So he is a unifier of all three. Um, the son of heaven was the middleman for all the three realms, heaven, earth, and the human world. So number three is significant. So is number nine. Uh, so there is a lot of number nine symbolism. For example, the concentric layers of the, um, of the stone pavement um, on the altar of, on the altar, um, it's nine. There are nine concentric layers of stone pave, pavement to make that platform. Um, and then, you know, um, the total number of stone used um, is, you know, 360 something. So that is also, you know, four, 40 times nine. So um, nine as a, is an important symbolism for um, a symbolic number for the temple of heaven. So is a three, three, nine, um, also 12. So for the good year building, so I simplify it as a good year building. Um, so it's not the, uh, uh, the tire company, but let's just to simplify it as a good year building. It has uh, 12 columns dividing the surrounding area into 12 bays. And uh, obviously um, you guys should know immediately what the symbolism is, right? So the 12 columns represent the 12th month. And this is the same symbolism as in the Ming Tang architecture where there are 12 small buildings to accommodate those monthly ritual performance.
a very famous photo. Um, okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, sorry for um, losing the connection. So I hope you you can uh, hear me all right now. Um, so this is the in interior interior of the. Um, Goodyear building, um, the temple of heaven. So um, it is also an interior space just for a tablet. Uh, so it's the tablet is also um, for heaven. Um, so it is the prayer to heaven for a good year. And this is the ceiling. Again, it is a circular form and uh, it is a dome. Um, made of a, a post and lintel uh, structure using bracket. And as an imperial building, a uh, dragon image is everywhere. So you see those dragons painted on the beams and the dragons on the, uh, you know, uh, coiling on the columns and uh, the central kind of golden dragon. Uh, in the central uh, uh, ceiling. <clears throat> so now let me just to show you very, very briefly um, the other, other um, altars. So this is the uh, Temple of Earth, nicknamed, and uh, the central building is also an altar. So Earth, <clears throat> the, the altar of Earth has two layer platforms. Um, because in um, Confucianism as well as Taoism, um, the earth is yin and the heaven is yang, right? Um, so the heaven, temple of heaven use yang number, that is the odd number, use three, but temple of earth use the yin number, which is even number. So here we have two layers of platform. And it is also, um, surrounded by a square um, wall. And that square inner layer is surrounded by another square. So um, here, the Temple of Earth is characterized by only um, the square motif, because according to the Chinese cosmology, the Earth is square, right? So that complex is, uh, is here to the north. Um, in the northern suburb. And this is the, um, <clears throat> the altar to the sun or temple of the sun, which is here. Okay. Very simple, just one platform uh, to make sacrifice to the spirit of the sun. And um, then there's also um, a temple of the moon, but that is is no longer in existence. Uh, that became a, a park today and um, the uh, royal building uh, was not preserved there. All right, um, <clears throat> so another kind of a major Confucian um, ritual complex is the Confucian temple in Beijing. And the Confucian temple 
is uh, located. Um, let me see. Um, located, located here. Right. So that's the um, where uh, the Confucian Confucius Temple is located here. So Confucius Temple also shouldered part of the function of the Ming Tang of previous Ming Tang because we know Ming Tang is both the kind of for ritual performance as well as for uh, education. And Confucius was worshiped as the uh, great um, um, teacher, basically. He was the god of teacher as well. And um, so, so Confucius temple dedicated to Confucius, but it is also the place where the imperial um, college, imperial university is located, the educational, imperial education center just like the previous Ming Tang was, right? So it also split part of the function of the Ming Tang, just like, you know, um, the Temple of Heaven and other altar split um, the, the ritual sacrificial function of Ming Tang. Confucian Temple split, uh, you know, shared the um, uh, educational function of previous Ming Tang. So located in the center is a building called a, surrounded by a circular water um, that is called a Biyong, right? So Ming Tang and Biyong. Biyong refer to the uh, circular water enclosing the Ming Tang. And here in the uh, Confucian temple, there is a central square building enclosed by a circular uh, water that is called a Biyong. And this is the central building of, in the Confucian temple. And uh, so here it gives, gives you a better look at the uh, relationship between the square building in the middle and the circular water. Um, <clears throat> the building is a square uh, building um, of a three bay square building with a um, all around the corridor. Uh, so you see five bays, but actually it is count as a three bay plus a uh, all around corridor. Uh, it's like a peristyle uh, in Western you know, terminology, peristyle building. And it is uh, pure, um, it's a pointed roof, all four side hipped and uh, with double eave. So it's a high level building, although you know, it is um, not as high as the um, Hall of Supreme Harmony because here it has a pointed roof, but it is kind of a double eaved and uh, with three, um, three bays on each side. So it has a perfect square um, plan and with a circular uh, mode. So that square and a circle motif is still dominating the design here. Um, next to it is the um, temple dedicated to Confucius, um, to the worship of Confucius as the god of teacher and the um, the great, um, uh, you know, great saint. Um, it features a, you know, a gate. And inside of the gate is um, a archway. The archway is a brick archway, masonry archway, but uh, the um, uh, timber framework was delineated with glazed tile. So the glazed tile decoration mark a post and lintel um, uh, building structure, but in reality, it is um, an arch, uh, structure, masonry arched structure, right? So um, it's kind of similar to the, you know, the Roman architecture having the um, uh, Greek uh, orders superimposed on a arched um, archway, right? The, uh, the, the trifle arch. Um, and here it is the, um, the arch superimposed with the uh, 
traditional Chinese timber uh, framework, and also um, all those brackets were mimicked uh, in, in bricks and uh, the sloping roof as well. So which are, which, which are of course, um, you know, structurally totally unnecessary. Uh, you don't need those for masonry structure, but it's mimicking those timber framework. And it, yeah, so that's the, um, the, the archway uh, called a pilo, right? So that, that um, called a pilo. Uh, so somehow I, I feel that all language uh, in the world are connected. The somehow, you know, different languages might have the same origin because pilo in Chinese sounds, um, sounds very close to pylon that we use to, to refer to, you know, the Egyptian and uh, Mesopotamian gate called the pylon, pylon, right? So. <clears throat> and, um, you know, we are looking at the uh, central building um, on the, um, uh, from under that, um, that, that um, archway, uh, looking at the, um, the Biyong, the circular water and the central, uh, sacri central, central building. And this is the building where um, the Chinese emperor, the son of heaven, uh, would give an annual lecture to the students of the Imperial University. So it is kind of a um, symbolically representing the son of heaven, not only as the ruler on earth, but also as the great sage, the great um, teacher, um, uh, educator as well. So um, the um, Ming Tang, the Bi Yong here, it's a share, the uh, part of the function of the previous Ming Tang. Um, this is a gate to uh, the temple dedicated to Confucius. Um, and uh, within it is the uh, a temple for Confucius. So here it's uh, the temple uh, dedicated to the sacrifice to um, Confucius as a great individual, a great sage from the past. Uh, so every year during the you know exam season, students would come here to to pray to Confucius um, to get good grade uh, in China, and um, so um, here he is primarily worshipped as a great teacher, great sage from the past. Um, it is a very high level building, right? It has seven um, bays across. Um, it's a major facade. It also features a double eave pure hipped roof, and that is um, a very high ranked uh, roof style, as you know already. So um, I think we can complete this lecture um, right here. So uh, we looked at the city of Beijing. We know it is very regular. It is very ritualistic. It has a lot of, certainly has a lot of ritual building, but even those palaces are following those ritual code passed on from the Zhou dynasty. Um, and um, just very briefly, two additional ritual architecture in, this, in, the, um, in the city of Beijing, just outside of the Forbidden City. On the left, which is the east, is the imperial ancestral temple. There, the tablets inscribed with the name of the um, empress from previous generations are preserved here. And this is basically um, ancestral shrine for the imperial family. And on the right, which is on the west side of the central axis, is the, um, um, the altar of soil and green. Right, so on the east side, ancestral temple. On the west side, the, the national altar or the state altar, which is called the altar of soil and grain. 
So um, we are going to look very briefly. Um, so here we are looking at their roofs, three buildings. And um, um, so this is the gate to the ancestral temple. And um, after one layer of gate, another layer of gate to give you a sense of kind of sacred um, space. And um, another gate, you know, don't mis mistake this as the main hall. This is still a gate. So many layers of gate. And after this, this is the, the main building, right? Um, for the worship of the um, imperial ancestors in the form of inscribed names on tablet. So that's Confucian, right? That's why we call it Confucian or ritual. Um, this is not Taoist, uh, not Buddhist. They were not worshiping icon. They just worship the word, worship the title, um, the writing, the written form. Um, so repre represent that spirit instead of the, uh, the look um, of the ancestor. Um, so today it is called the, the palace for the working people uh, under the socialist government uh, became a park basically. So I'm going, not going to uh, speak that much because we need to move on to a different topic. This is the interior and uh, three buildings, just like the, uh, in the Forbidden City immediately to the north, kind of three building complex is the main, um, main motif, architectural motif. Now the, um, the altar of soil and grain, again, um, be prepared to pass many layers of wall and many layers of gate um, to enter that central space, which in this case is a platform, but this platform um, had a, the, the top part was not to be occupied by anyone. Um, all sacrifice were made uh, in, the, in the ground because on top of that, it is um, a pavement of soil of five different colors, Center, central yellow, Um, yellow earth in the center and uh, red earth in the south, uh, black earth in the north, uh, you know, so-called blue earth um, on the east side and the white earth um, on the west side. So obviously these are the four, five symbolic color for the Chinese cosmology, right? Um, so um, the East is, you know, blue green and uh, South is red, North is black and West is white and the center is yellow, right? So it represents basically the altar of soil and green it represents China. Um, so these are the symbolic representation of China as the, um, you know, the center of, of the world um, with, you know, different color, symbolic color. So this is a ritual architecture. It is uh, following the Confucian ideology about uh, cosmology, about the relationship between the cosmology and human society. <clears throat> 